Welcome everyone, I'm Pat Corcoran, Luxol's practice lead for our external relations practice. I'm here with two astute guests to focus on the impact of regulatory and compliance within financial services. I'd like to start by having them introduce themselves before we begin a great dialogue around this. Oliver? Hey, uh, I'm Oliver Bishop. I'm a manager at Elixir. I've spent all my career so far in consulting, mainly in strategy, but like a lot of consultants over the last couple of years. We spend a huge amount of time in regulation, helping in particular clients get ready for MIFID II. Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Maynard. Uh, I work in Luxoft in Excellion, which is the division that focuses on financial services. I've been working in technology for investment banks for, I think, now about 20 years, and of late focused on the regulatory agenda. Welcome, gentlemen. I think uh, the reason why the introduction is particularly important here is to show the audience that we're coming from two different angles around a very important topic. So let's start with the high-level question. I think the, the words regulation, compliance, uh, policy have been thrown around quite a bit in this space. How are you both seeing this impact financial services from your end-user client point of view? Mark? I guess 15 years or so ago, uh, the regulatory agenda started to emerge and desks started appointing compliance officers, but you'd often see, often see them asleep at their desk. Uh, you won't see that anymore. Um, the, the agenda uh, around regulation has, has certainly moved from being something that was, that was bolt on, uh, perhaps something that back office and a side tech group dealt with, to something that's very much at the forefront of everything that a bank does. It's very much part of what front office does now. And as a result, uh, the technology stack has had to be re-engineered from, from literally the bottom all the way through to the top to support that. Oliver, how are you seeing it from that angle? Right, I'm kind of I'm talking yeah, maybe 10 years ago or so, people would be con constantly seeing it as a kind of like a bolt-on on the back end. So you need, to report, you need to report transactions, you need to know that the data is correct. So people would look right to the back office, see where the trade's getting settled, they know it's right, and then there'd probably be some kind of at least semi-manual process stuck on the back. Um, nowadays, it's kind of, it, basically requirements are much, much, much more to the front end. So you, there's now kind of real-time reporting of trades, um, and therefore that, that process just doesn't work. Regulators probably, all, probably also didn't consider the impact on the markets as much as they should have done. Um, generally, it was a much less kind of collaborative approach between regulators and banks back then, and uh, we've seen that improve significantly. So uh, organisations such as ESMA sit, sit in the middle and ultimately take feedback from the banks and make sure that regulation works for banks as well. Um, but yeah, it's basically, there's been a much more strategic approach need to be taken from, uh, from an IT architecture perspective. So what we're seeing in terms of service procurement, there's an intersection of buyers within end user organization, business side, technology side. Has that changed the way that regulation is being procured in terms of service provider offerings, or hasn't it not? So I think there's, obviously the customers are the same, they're, they're still the banks. Uh, there's definitely been a change of focus uh, so uh, there's a lot more, uh, I guess, input from regulatory officers and compliance officers. Uh, they have a lot more say. Uh, and I think as part of that, the focus perhaps of what we're asked to do has changed, uh, whereby, uh, I guess, up to maybe even just five years ago, front office would have a big say you know, on where the money was, was spent and what we were doing. And over the last few years, uh, we've seen that that's changed and, and now uh, it's the regulatory guys that, that are driving the work packages that we're asked to look at. Are you seeing a similar area within the consulting world? Yeah, similar, but um, I'd probably add it's not so much the it's not so much the kind of the, the, the front office or the business owners kind of pulling back as the, the the strengthening of those compliance roles almost. So they have much more of a say in in who's buying, but regulation has ultimately pushed the the kind of the requirements of that purchase much further up the agenda of senior managers and um, and business owners. So it kind of it's just it's taken a lot more seriously on all sides. So those those people are the business people are required to have much better understanding of what they're buying because ultimately when they come to when they come to implement it and use it, um, they are much more accountable for it than they ever used to be. A lot more providers like kind of old old. Uh, old kind of information technology providers are making new services, you're getting startups appearing, and really just, you know, the landscape is changing. 
And in terms of the the role that the government's playing, you know, vis-a-vis -vis policy making, how has that had to change the way that we are positioning, not really for today, but tomorrow, in terms of what's upcoming, you know, what could be potentially upcoming, and in terms of the speed that the end users are actually implementing this across the enterprise? I mean, where's has the focus now been more around the policy making in and of itself, rather than just simply implementing the technology and waiting around for the next piece because you want to stay ahead of the game? Is that a fair statement? It is. So I think one of the big problems, I guess, that, that technology now has is interpretation of the requirements. Uh, and that's always a big sticking point. The, the legislation is written, and I think at the time of, of, of writing it, there was an intention. The intention is not always clear when you come to interpret it and then, and then implement it. And what we see is that there's an increasing reliance, actually, on, on technology to interpret what the requirement is and come up with an appropriate solution. Yeah, yeah. Is that playing a role too in yeah, so the consulting world? It's 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 they're coming a bit closer, I guess. So the 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 requirements were kind of much less clearly written and left to a lot of interpretation, and therefore, when particularly when there's a skills gap in some compliance roles and some operational roles who are actually saying what should what should we report, what should we do, how should we structure our business. Um, there was kind of there was lack of clarity and a need for a lot of change. So whilst you would think that something that was written was written and that was it, you realise that either you failed to interpret it correctly, or the market's view has changed, or particularly as we saw from the regulators with Amir, things are things have been staged. So it's not just kind of one big bang, which ultimately is kind of slightly lessens the impact. Um, but kind of regulate regulators and organisations are getting closer together. So it is. It is getting better and it is getting more predictable, but the changes are becoming more significant ultimately.